RMG's Trash Talk is brought to you by Scrubs 911, Somerset's medical uniform store. Learn more at scrubs911.com or like them on Facebook. If you've watched this show any time here recently, you know that I've said it a million times that RMG Sports got its start at Jennerstown Speedway here in Somerset County. We got our start covering local short track racing with Chase to the Checkered, and that moved on to other sports and other things. But we got our start at Jennerstown. So to see how it became here recently with uh, how it kind of degraded and was just left unattended was heartbreaking. And as heartbreaking as it was to see that, so happy to see what it's become. And I've been, I'm very happy to have the guys from Jennerstown Speedway. I've been talking to them on the phone and here uh, today we have Billy Rebar, one of the general managers there. Billy, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I, I've wanted to talk about Jennerstown Speedway since we started this show, because we started there and initially it was, let's talk about the bad side of it, but there's so much good stuff going on now. Uh, and, we'll, and we'll talk about that here in a minute, but let's just go back real quick and talk about we were talking before we rolled the cameras about the history of the Speedway. Now, I don't want to go back. I know it was started back in 1920 at the Jenner's Fairgrounds and all that. But here in more recent memory or more or uh, in, the, in the late, or no, I'm sorry, in the mid-2000s or the, uh, the early 2000s, we had guys there that we interviewed. We just we spoke about how we interviewed Kyle Bush, an 18-year-old Kyle Bush. And we went up to him and asked him, hey, are, are you Kurt's brother? And uh, yeah, he's Kurt's brother, and now they're going to be racing in Las Vegas here, uh, here very soon. And um, some of the other names that you still see in in uh, in racing, like Joey Logano raced at Jennerstown. We've had Reed Sorensen race at Jennerstown. Uh, and it seemed like that was the springboard to move into NASCAR. Either way, a lot of exciting things have gone on at Jennerstown and in, in short track racing. And, and Billy, you've, you've been there to see a lot of them. Let's talk real quick about the recent history of Jennerstown. You know, Steve Pellis and Bob Brooks owned it in 2002. Dave Wheeler took over in 2003. And that was really, he did a lot for the Speedway. And why don't we talk about that a little bit? What are some of the things when Dave Wheeler took over in 03, what are some of the things that he did? Dave Wheeler really actually changed the infrastructure and how racing is sought in the area in my mind. Um, he really tried to make it a professional format for both the racers and the fans, and it was viewed in a very high regard in the area. And in 2004, when he repaved the Speedway, that's just a monumental feat that just isn't seen in short track racing anywhere in the country. So you don't hear about tracks being built, let alone repaved. That was just a huge feat that was to see in our area. Talking with some of the veteran drivers, the guys that had been around and had raced Jennerstown for a long time, mainly the ASA guys, back when mm -hmm. the ASA was the ASA, uh, Gary St. Amant, and they always talked about the turn three ramp. I guess there was a ramp going into turn three or a big bump. It was taken away whenever they repaved, but still the track was so fast. Yeah, a so lot fast. of these tracks have character that no matter where you go, you know, they're notorious for one thing or the other. And the speed that that track has, even to this day, the amount of grip. And, you know, just this past season, we had some gentlemen from down south, Colt James. He came up a late model driver, and he made reference as Jennerstown as like racing Indianapolis. So when they hear that from other guys that travel, that they're pretty successful in doing this and hear compliments like that, it makes us feel good knowing this is in our own backyard. In 09, Dave closed the track, just couldn't make things happen. Things were tough. It was the recession, try to get sponsors. It was a, it was a hard time and, and the track was closed. And we saw it really degrade to an embarrassing level. I was there for a, a, a driving experience and I will have some photos that I took while I was there. The infield looked like a hayfield, very high grass. It had been vandalized. Along comes John Taylor and Zero Time Entertainment. Now, bad feelings with these guys, we know. It's very well publicized in the media. They left town owing a lot of people a lot of money. But what they did do was they made a lot of improvements and brought it up to a standard that you could at least race there again. They, they, they cut down the trees along the front stretch, right? Correct. Uh, those gentlemen did do an excellent job bringing life back to the Speedway. I attended most of the races those season. I was helping out with a late model team, and it was just an amazing feeling to be a part of that again. So they definitely opened a door that probably would not have been open. And along comes, as Mike Satoski likes to say, the gang of six. 
the new owners, local owners. These aren't guys from out of town. These are guys with a vested interest in this community. They came in and they said, okay, Dave Wheeler, we want to run the track. They worked a deal. And in 2015, I, I mean, it, they, they had to make some improvements, but it was a fantastic season. We did eight months of work in eight weeks. I'll never forget, it was Easter Sunday, 5 p.m., sitting at home, my kids were sleeping, and I got a phone call from Richard Pollagrud, who's the best friend I've ever had in my life. And Richard's one of our owners, and he called me and says, what are you doing? Same conversation every time. So I'm sitting here, you know, watching TV. He goes, well, we just bought Jennerstown. And my immediate reaction is, are you nuts? Like, <laughs> what are you talking about here? He says, yeah, me and five other guys, we worked out a deal that we're going to Jennerstown, I want you to be a part of it. And my initial reaction again is, are you crazy? Mm -hmm. And here we are, we did eight months of work in eight weeks and it was pretty successful. Started a little late with a June start, fought mother nature at the beginning. And once the season got rolling and you had to tie a lot on, uh, untie a lot of knots to convince people, hey, this is the real deal, this is a commitment. And one of the things you, you made a comment to is a commitment to the community. And that's what these guys are about through and through. We've done so much with local organizations, the school districts. It's just been monumental, and the confidence is back. When you show up on a Saturday night, you feel like you're at the county fair. We got kennel corn. We got clowns face painting. We got a DJ. People are just blown away that you can create that atmosphere on a Saturday night in Somerset County. Let me go along with that, but I'm going to bring something in that we, need, we really need to talk about. I think the fans want to know. I think some of the drivers want to know as well, especially... The, the, the fans that are hardcore Jennerstown fans, hardcore short track racing fans. You know, when the couple of races that I went to, it was amazing. The stands were packed. We had to park for the first time. I didn't know you could park all the way out by those trees, but we were all the way back by the trees. I never had to walk so far to get to Jennerstown. And uh, it was fantastic. But then we sit down and we watch the race. We look down at the track and car count. Car count's a problem. The late model division, which is the feature division, it's the fastest cars out there, most expensive cars too. Uh, I saw races where there were maybe six cars. So you were one good wreck away from having a two car race. What, if anything, can Jennerstown do? Or how's it looking for 2016? I know you guys are selling pit stalls and that's a good indication of how many cars are gonna be in the pits. What's the indication thus far before you guys even open for 2016? Well, looking back, as Satoski mentioned whenever he was doing an interview with you, and you have to look at the fact that a lot of your local guys, when it initially closed the first time with Dave, they hold on to things for so long. And after a while, they drifted away. They either you know, scrapped them, they sold them. So you, you always have to have that. When you commit to something, these gentlemen committed that they are going to be there. And once people recognize that commitment, you're going to see things transition and come backward. And I can confidently tell you that more cars have either traded hand or been sold in this last offseason than probably the last 10 years combined. And that's just the nature of the, the facts here. It's, we have 138 cars that are registered for this season. Wow. Now, mind you that there are people that are ready, there are people that are buying cars, there are people who are building these cars. But you made a mention to the pit stalls. We have sold 50 pit stalls. That is my entire front stretch, if you want to make that an equivalent. The excitement is there, the exuberance is there. Guys see the commitment. We put our rules out early in October, Guys understand what they need to prepare for. It's not a spur of the moment, let's change this type thing. And they understand it's going to be there. So I'm extremely confident for this season. Once practice day comes, it's not guys putting things together at the last minute. They know what date it is. It's on the calendar. They're ready to roll. One thing I've noticed, and we've mentioned this about other types of racing, whether it was powerboat racing, dirt track racing, whatever, is as you go down pit road, and I have gray hair, so I can't say too much. But there's a lot of gray hair getting into the cockpit. Not as many younger people. Now, I know that this is a problem that's across the board in motorsports, but is there something that a track can do to help move the drivers from the, you know, up through the ranks, you know, with the four cylinders, up through Street Stock Charger, all that, into a late model? Or is that something that you guys provide a, a venue for them to do it? and they'll have to figure it out on their own. We're extremely hands-on with the racing community. And that's when I first started last year, I was pretty much on a volunteer basis and I absorbed my own title of fan and racer relations. And you can ask everybody in those pits that on any given night throughout the season, I either spoke to everyone or tried to shake as many hands as I could because we wanted them to feel they had a voice. When we did the rules, we sent out a form, hey guys, here's your input. And we, we've leaned on that very heavily. The rule book 
for asphalt racing hadn't been changed in years. And everyone's resistant of change, but that doesn't mean you can't clean it up. This year in 2016, you're going to see old late model bodies on street stocks because the 15, 16 year old kid in the stands can't recognize a 1975 Monte Carlo. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that, but it's just the concept. We're trying to make that connection. We're trying to bring it back. When I was growing up in the 90s, Charger and Charlie Cragen was my all-time hero. I watched the Pirates. I watched the Penguins. Asphalt racing were my heroes. And I have pictures of me standing next to Charlie in his car, and I would go to places and see him. I want to bring that atmosphere back to Jennerstown. And you mentioned about the gray hair. That is kind of where the sport has evolved. It, the lack of commitment of not knowing what's to come, it, there was no legacy passed down to the younger generation. So that's something that we can hopefully get back to where it's not just, okay, I own my car, I drive my car, potentially see some people that own cars and field them for other people to drive. And that's where I think you start getting to where you can see a guy go from a four cylinder to a charger from a charger to a street stock and so far up the ladder. I have, I think, almost eight or nine rookies in the street stock division this year that have raced other classes. They've always wanted that opportunity to move forward, but they've never wanted to take that leap. They're selling the car that they have, they're purchasing something new, and they're moving up. So it's gonna be an exciting season. A lot of fans that aren't you know, completely in love with racing when they think asphalt racing, when they think stock car racing, they think NASCAR. Is Jennerstown going to be a NASCAR affiliated track in 2016? And if not, can you explain why not? For the current upcoming season in 2016, we'll remain non-NASCAR sanctioned. It's, it's like anything. When you become a part of a bigger group, the piece of the pie gets smaller. And we really want to focus on building our racing program at Jennerstown. We charge $20 a mission at our back gate. That is unheard of at any racetrack in this country. We've actually been criticized for that. That is basically our way of trying to tell our racers, we want you here, you're a big part of this, passing that along to them. And, and along with that, we're trying to reduce costs all the way across the board. We're trying to implement tire rules so that spending doesn't get out. I want races one with notebooks, not checkbooks. And you know, checkbooks help, don't oh, get me yeah. wrong. Mm -hmm. But they help when, in TV when too, the guy really, feels yeah. like he no longer has that competitive chance, that's when he hangs it up. So you want everybody to feel they have an equal playing field. So we're, we're doing everything possible and I definitely think we're on the right, I mean, I've had six phone calls on the way up here today just answering basic questions and you can just hear it in people's voices, they're excited. So let's continue our discussion about 2016. Now. Obviously, as with the other tracks that we, we talk to, multiple classes run, not at the same time, but they run throughout the evening. How many classes is Jennerstown going to run next year and what are they? We have five divisions of racing on a weekly program. We have our four cylinder front wheel drive class, which is used to be the beginner novice class, which has turned into an extremely competitive class. And I can tell you as of this afternoon, we have 43 cars registered for that division. Wow. So when you, when you play the number game, when you have 138 total, two thirds, you still have an impressive field. If you get half of that, that's still a heck of a racing program. Our next division up is what we call our charger division. It is a 305 automatic old 75 Monte Carlo, limited changes, safety modifications. That is their next step. So they move up from a front wheel drive car to a rear wheel drive, a little smaller V8 opposed to getting into something with more money, more horsepower. Mm. The next division would be our street stock division. As I discussed earlier, we opened up the rules a little bit to see Camaro bodies. Um, some of these body packages you can buy right now, it used to be you had to go to the junkyard and pull these panels off. Mm -hmm. You had so much time in finding them and prepping them and painting them that you could have went and bought something. So we've opened it up to see some Camaro Mustangs this year possibly. That's our street stock division. And you will see Fords, you will see Chevys. It's a little more of a modification to where there's weight jacks now involved. See, so there's a lot more handling and suspension involved versus the Charger division. Still rear wheel drive, V8s, that's a step up from that. And then you have your modified division, which is completely different than anything else we run there. And that's something you have a little bit of experience with, correct? Correct, I, I actually ran a modified for six years. I did fairly well, had a few victories and had a great time, but Life moves on, yeah. buy a house, have some kids, and <laughs> I really enjoy being on this side of the fence right now, and, yeah. and I think we're doing a pretty good job at it. But so the modifieds are coming back to Jennerstown. Correct. Um, 
I, I will state the obvious, you know, that was the lowest car count of the season last year, but we stuck with them and they've pretty much committed to us this year. You know, when I first met with these gentlemen, the, the group of six, I said to them, I says, guys, you gotta promise me one thing right here, right now, before we go any further. I said, you don't even know me, but you have to commit to me that you will keep every division the whole length of the season and through the next season. And everybody kind of looked around and I explained why. I says, you're not gonna have guys commit to you if you don't commit to them. And we've done that. And we have guys that have gone to Virginia to pick up cars. We have guys that are coming back. Um, I'll mention his name, Chris Brink. He raced in 2014, kind of stepped away, didn't race this past season. Chris is a pretty good friend of mine. He just picked up a major sponsor for this year. He's ex elated to be a part of it again. Um, it's amazing how many people are just coming back because they see that commitment and that confidence. If you've never seen the Modifieds race at Jennerstown, I hold my breath the whole time. Um, it's a shame it was closed while I was racing, mm -hmm. but I'm kind of glad I didn't race there because I'd probably either be hooked or you never know. It's, it's, it's a different experience than anything else. And then we have our late models, which are Premier Division. This is about as close as you'll get to actually seeing cars on TV at Jennerstown. This, the whole sport of racing has evolved so much over time. And as you mentioned, the gray haired guys, you know, guys like Barry Audi that I grew up watching, and Barry and I, I consider him a pretty good friend of mine, and we take jabs at each other all the time. It has changed so much, and he had to evolve with that, or he would have never stayed competitive. That is not something that someone sitting in the stand says, hey, I want to do that. You need that element. You need that element of, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. And that's what gets people intrigued and be a part of it. So they might start in a four-cylinder. I can tell you right now, uh, we are the only track in the local area running asphalt late models this year. I have two rookies that I won't mention their names because I don't know if they want it out there yet, but <laughs> they've actually purchased cars. They've sold other divisional cars, and they're going to run for you know rookie points this season, which is unheard of in the sport. So that's fantastic. Well, you spoke about modifieds. Let's talk about a different type of modified. Yeah, you're smiling. You know what I'm talking about. I know about. where you're going with this. Let's talk about the special events coming this year. 2016, the Super Modifieds return to Jennerstown. July 16th, the Isma Super Modifieds will be returning, as you mentioned. If you've never experienced these, these are the world's fastest cars on asphalt. I had the opportunity one time to push one of these off in a dune buggy, and you could just feel the percussion come off of these things and instantly it takes off and if you've never seen them you have to go on YouTube you have to check them out they have an adjustable wing they're telling us they're going to do about 126 to 128 mile an hour around Jennerstown the wing tilts when it goes down the straightaway it's flat for no resistance when they hit the corner it tilts up to give them traction it is unbelievable experience and I can state this anywhere you go in the country this show it could just be the super modifieds and it's a $45 to get in. Mm -hmm. You go somewhere, they might run seven divisions and it's $65. We're gonna run our five division show plus the super modifieds. Right now, pre-sale tickets are $25. Wow. And to make it even more incredible, if you pre-order these online on our website at jennerstown.org, you purchase these ISMA tickets in advance, you will get two complimentary passes used for any other regular season event. So that's a value of $10, you're paying five dollars to see the isma super modifieds we've sold tickets in five different states right now the furthest being seven hours and 17 minutes away wow. so people are aware of the super modifieds we're anticipating and really hoping that this is going to sell out it's sold out every other time they've ever been there and with the buzz around the season and that deal that's going on right now it's going to happen that's a that's a big big show and i'll tell you we covered them twice on chase to the checker to jennerstown and when you have your, your weekly show and you have a touring series come in that has the same body style, you know, another late model touring series come in, you have to be really in tune with this type of racing to see the difference. Yeah, they're a little bit faster, a little Correct. bit faster. Super modified, you can, this can be your first race ever and you will know immediately these are something special. They fly around that racetrack. And it's interesting because you have your dirt racers, your asphalt racers, and your true love racers. It doesn't matter what hat you wear. When the super modifieds are coming to town, you're that type of racer, mm -hmm. and it just speaks volumes. Are there any other touring series coming through? I know last year you had Arca Trucks. I know that there's, uh, there's some other late model series. What, what else is coming through this year? Right now, what we have booked, we have the Super Cup Stock Car Series, which used to be 
Hooters Cup, and they were Pro Cup, now they're Super Cup Series. Last year, when they were at the Speedway, they were there in August, they had their largest count in nine years, hmm. car count in nine years. They had 21 cars at our track, wow. and they ran twin features. And I really believe that opened a lot of opportunities for them. They've actually signed a national television deal with Mav TV. They're going to run two nights, July 9th and August 27th. They're going to run twin 50 features. We're going to run one in the daylight, and we're going to run one after dark. All four of these races, so two on the 9th, two on the 27th, all four of these races will be nationally televised on Mav TV. So that's, that's a big honor. That really is. And that's one thing that, again, you go back in the day, I can remember our cameras right next to TBS whenever they'd be there covering the ASA, and our cameras right next to uh, the Fox cameras and Speed when they were, would, would be there covering uh, some Hooters Pro Cup races. And it was neat for us to be. There's a little old RMG, but we're right there with these guys. And it was, I mean, it happened all the time. Yep. You know, the, the, you'd see Jennerstown on TV all the time, and you'd see racing on TV all the time. And now you don't see as much as you used to, but it's good to see that the national cameras come back because that's good for us. That's good for us in Somerset County. Absolutely. And it's not that it's gone off people's radar. It's back there somewhere, but it's just kind of the old forgotten thing. And when I talk to people and tell them what I'm doing, excuse me, and who I'm involved with, and, oh, Jennerstown, I haven't been there in years. Well, obviously you weren't because it was closed, but, mm -hmm. you know, would you consider coming back? And you start talking to them and you show them that excitement and that passion. It's like, wow, I'm going to have to check it out this summer. Best feeling in the world last year is when you talk to somebody about that from about an hour away, and they actually make a point to come up and tap you on the shoulder at the track and say, hey, we made it. That makes it worth it right there. And that's happened so many times over and over. And that's what we're trying to bring back. I mean, we want the local community. We love the support. But we want to bring those people into Somerset County. And that's the idea behind the Isma race. That's a huge undertaking for these guys. And it took nothing to convince them to bring this, these back. And we've actually worked out a deal with some local hotels. If people are looking for accommodations, they can contact the Speedway. They're going to give you a price break on a stay. And, you know, we want people to enjoy what else is here, not just the Speedway. That's fantastic. Now, let's talk about, you know, you're talking about other things, not just the Speedway, but sticking with the Speedway. What are some of the other things that might be happening with the Speedway? I know that there's a, there's a ride and drive program there. Correct. We actually are in the process right now. Uh, in the past, they've contracted different organizations to come in. We are creating our own Jennerstown racing experience, which will be done with one of our, our modified competitors, Lou Baudai and Stephen Sheltman, who drives a charger car for us. Uh, Stephen's family is a remarkable group of people. They actually put together and built a handicap accessible ride and drive car. There are very few like this anywhere. Wow. And they did this out of their own kindness of their heart. Uh, last year, they gave us the amazing opportunity to give some people the opportunity that would never have this right. to ride in a race car. And uh, what this has actually transpired to is somewhat of an emotional tearjerker for me. Uh, we have a young man in the crowd that's been there for as long as I can remember, Justin Frampton, and he's local. And Justin had the opportunity to ride in one of these cars with Steven. And from that day forward, he said, hey, I want to drive a race car. I want to drive a race car. No, no, he's, he's got a condition. Though. He's... He is actually paralyzed from the waist down. Okay. So he's in a wheelchair. And, you know, Justin's very active, goes to all the wrestling matches. He has a PA driver's license. He works at Lowe's. He goes to work every day. And you know, he had this dream of being a race car driver and uh, some remarkable individuals have come together and they've actually purchased the car for Justin to drive this year and he will be competing in our Charger division. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. That's something you, you don't see anywhere no. else. You don't hear about that. No. And, and that's, that's great you're taking care of him. Any other types of events happening, swap meets? Any? Yes, we actually have some really great promotions this year. Uh, we just recently finished a deal with Lockheed Martin Aero Parts. They will be sponsoring an Armed Forces Night, which is May 21st, which is Armed Forces Day, so mm -hmm. that's absolutely fantastic. Any current or retired military will be admitted free into the Speedway. We will be contacting every VFW and American Legion within 50 miles. I'm actually working with a gentleman in the Department of Veteran Affairs at the University of Pittsburgh and California University. We want this to be an overwhelming experience for our veterans to show our appreciation. So if anybody's interested and you don't, we don't have a whole lot out yet because this just happened in this past week or so, please contact the Speedway, email me. I will get you that information to get your organization involved in this. Um, I, I'm in the process right now to try to have some vehicles out for kids to see. And it's just an amazing experience that Lockheed Martin is going to be presenting for us. Well, it sounds like you guys have 
a ton of stuff going on for 2016, and it sounds like you've got stability, which is something that the Speedway has been lacking for a while now. We are already working on 2017. I mean, we have some major plans, provided Mother Nature cooperates this year and things can, you know, on pace for what it was last year, we're already working on 2017. And another thing I want to add is we have a first responders night on June 11th. Any fire, EMS, police personnel are admitted free. Last year we did this, we had about 15 or 20 fire apparatus that got to do a parade lap around, just a sense of appreciation. And that is sponsored by Somerset Trust, who's also our divisional sponsor of our four cylinders. So it's a great night. Uh, we'll be sending out flyers to every fire department in Bedford, Somerset, Westmoreland, Indiana, and Cambria County. We'll be getting a flyer from me in the mail. Contact us and come visit us on that night. They can also get more information, Jennerstown.org. Jennerstown.org, yes. Well, Billy Rebar, we appreciate you coming by. I think we could sit here, you're just like Satoshi, we could sit here for three hours and talk racing. But it's good to see so many things happening. Again, stability, stability, stability. It's something that's been lacking at the Speedway. And it sounds like it's there. What I saw last year was phenomenal. And here's hoping you can repeat and improve this year. Absolutely. So good luck to you and thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me.